I was in Tokyo. Yes, yeah, so, so, celebrated my ten year wedding anniversary. Congratulations again! Yes, that was amazing, and we had a, a ton of fun. Daria met me out there. We did a Moonbirds meetup, so we had over a hundred Japanese speaking Moonbirds collectors out there, which was challenging and awesome at the same time. <laughs> and then Henry, yeah. my Zen instructor here, Shookman. Shookman here in the United States, introduced me to the head of his lineage of Zen who I got to go out and meet with and sit down with and have to a go to karaoke. private. Yeah, exactly. We're not <laughs> drinking and just do karaoke together all night long. No, but we, we, we had a little private gathering and sit down and did a, a, a private. Did he lay his hands on you? Exercise the demons? There was, there was no, he helped me with my practice and game. He speaks, uh, his English is quite good. And it was, it was very intimidating. Very intimidating. I bet. This is the, the, that's, he, the that's head of actually, Sambo Zen, which is like yeah, Sambo, a big... Sambo, that's right. Yeah. You know, the three treasures, like a big uh, lineage of Zen. And I'm sitting here with this guy, <laughs> you know, and he's just like asking me very pointed questions like about what? my intention what, in Zen. What is your intention with my daughter? Yeah, you know, more or less. <laughs> but it was like very cutting questions, dude. Like, like what? Like a surgeon just coming in and just like... I don't know if I should say the things because it's, it's this private interview, you know? <laughs> he gave me all the shit with not being able to come up with the no. brand of privacy protector. Okay. All right. No, it's just, <laughs> it's just like, it, I'll give he asked you, me all these amazing questions. Now I can't talk. About I'll give them. you an example. It's like, it, he's like, it's more or less like, why are you here? Like, where are you? You know how in Zen they have these, these phrases, we've talked about these cons before. You've yeah. done interviews with Henry and thank you for doing those. Like yeah. where it's like these moments where a really good Zen master can come in and look at a student and know kind of exactly the little nudge they need to give them. There's yeah. these like moments where they, they call it like, there's these stories in Zen where they grab your coat and yank you in a certain direction just to kind of get you to like snap, like wake up, like, yeah. you know, this moment just boom, they want you to pop. Yeah. And it was very much that, like, why are you here? What do you, what do you want from this? Like, boom, boom, boom. Like this rapid fire, like I think the guy questions. on the street when I walked back to my Airbnb in Venice asked <laughs> yeah, me those questions. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, but less fentanyl driven. But yeah, so it was amazing. It was very special. I hear the Zen masters have cut back on their fentanyl a lot. Yeah, this guy was operating in a different way. So what plane. did that feel like for you? Like, what was, why did you want to do it, first of all? Because... I just, you know, Henry had said such great things about him that, you know, and Henry is, is he will never say this publicly, but I believe he is one. Well, I'll say it for him. No, I will, because <laughs> I think it's important. Like he, he's, he's such a, a modest guy that like Henry is one of, I, I think it's like five or so of like fully sanctions and masters in this lineage. And that, mm. that's a big deal when there's, you know, hundreds of teachers in this, in this realm. So you know, this is his master, his, his mm. teacher. If you get a chance to take that meeting, you take it, you know? Yeah, and so, totally. you know, I went in You're there. You're not like, nah, I'm busy. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to try I'm, on some new shoes. I'm too, too busy I'm going, <laughs> going to try some fancy Japanese coffee, but which I did, which is amazing. Cafe Mamea out there is fantastic. But honestly, the, the one thing that I, I took away from it for, for people that, that I will share is that one of the things that he asked me is he's like, how, how often do you practice and how long do you practice? And I said, you know, I practice 25 minutes a day, probably five days a week. And he goes, what about the other two days? And I go, well, I got a startup. I got this and I got that. And he goes, I don't care. And I'm paraphrasing here, but he goes, I don't care if you practice five minutes a day. He goes, don't miss a day. Don't break a day. Hmm. Continue to do it. Don't, don't miss a day. Hmm. And since then, I have not missed a day. And I will say it's, it's kind of amazing because even if you can sit down for five minutes it just keeps that continuity going and, yeah. it, and, and it actually keeps me at a, a slightly elevated more, I don't know. It keeps the commitment stronger. Like it, it feels better. And that was, that was sound advice. That's great advice. Dario, can I trouble you for just a little bit of water, please? <laughs> Thank you so much. Should we, what? Wait, what's, what's water? You can do it. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Don't tell me. Yeah, you got it. Uh, oishi, it's so oishi. 
What? Oishi. No, that's, that's delicious. tasty. Yeah, I know. The water's tasty. What? Mizu. 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 Omizu. Omizu. Yep. Omizu. Like Mizu Tani. Mizu. There, hey. are, there are a lot of Mizus out there. So let's stay on the Japanese kick for a yeah. second. This is a book in front of me, which I'm just digging into. <laughs> Japanese death poems. Let's talk about Japanese death poems. I did not actually, I'm embarrassed to admit, know this was the thing. This was given to me by a friend who has spent a lot of time in the military and has developed a rather unique perspective, unique perspectives on death from, I suppose, the vantage point of a layperson, right, of a civilian. And so this book is, I'll, I'll just read the quote on the back. This is one of the the blurbs. A wonderful introduction to the Japanese tradition of Jisei. This volume is crammed with exquisite, spontaneous verse and pithy, often hilarious descriptions of the eccentric and committed monastics who wrote the poems. So these poems are written on the verge of death. And literally the mm. subtitle is written by Zen monks and haiku poets on the verge of death. Yes, <laughs> And uh, it's incredibly well researched. You have not just the English versions, you have the introduction and all the context, you have the Japanese, and then you have footnotes describing what these various words might mean, what the metaphors allude to. And it's really just a phenomenal window into an aspect of Japanese culture that I had no exposure to. I would have expected that I would have been exposed to this before, but I am I'm looking forward to diving into this and I've I've already read perhaps the first 10 pages. So this is Japanese Death Poems so fun by Tuttle Publishing compiled in with an introduction by Yoel Hoffman. So I have a handful, I don't know if I've told you this, but I have a handful of haiku books that I've read by Japanese masters. Yeah. And one of the things I always felt was just so beautiful about them is they always include their kind of death poems, like at the very end. Mm. It's oftentimes like on their deathbed when they're about to pass, like what is the last thing that they wrote down, right? And it's often in haiku form if they're a haiku master, right? Yeah, totally. And so it, it's just, it's beautiful stuff. Yeah, there's some really Japanese stuff in here, right? Like this is died 1698 for not honoring my parents while I lived in my last hour. I feel remorse, right? <laughs> that is very super Japanese. The autumn hues of knotweed seem like cups of wine. Yeah. Are you a big fan of haiku? I am. This is my first time really being exposed to a lot of Japanese and it does sound better in Japanese. There's a certain cadence to it. I'm not going to get the pronunciation quite perfectly here, but it's like if you have, okay, so Hakuro is this person, died on the 19th day of the 12th month, 1766. So the English, and I'm going to fuck this up in Japanese, so I apologize to any Japanese speakers out there, but the English, just listen to the sounds, like the cadence. So the English is an ailing mallard, falls through the chilly night and teeters off. Okay. But then the the Japanese is Yamu kari no yosamu ni orite obotsu kana. Right? So it just like has it has a cleaner mm -hmm. crisper cadence to it, which doesn't mean you shouldn't do the English, but this is my first time being exposed to a lot of haiku in Japanese, mm -hmm. which is fun for me. Number yeah, 1 because it's very hard for me to decipher in many cases, but they have a beautiful sound to them. So that's awesome. I have to pick that book up. Death poems. <laughs> yeah. There's a great poem about a haiku and about the masters called Three Simple Lines. Okay. Have you ever read that? No. It's a fantastic book that is written by a Zen practitioner that covers a lot of the, the Zen masters of haiku and along with a really beautiful personal story. So hmm. uh, definitely worth it. Very short read. Definitely worth picking up along with this. Yeah. I mean, how Japanese relate to death, which is something I have some exposure to, but not to the poems, this particular Jisei format tells you a lot about how they live. I mean, it, it, it does provide sort of a prism through which you can appreciate how they navigate a lot of life as well. Right. And like in, in addressing the final hours and thinking about 
dying death, the path to death. When you get a better understanding of that, many of the things that you observe in Japanese culture make more sense in a way.